Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today I wanted to talk briefly because I've done a video before but this was a while ago and it's a bit of a different perspective on this racket. It's actually the racket of Novak Djokovic. It looks like this. It's his personal frame. It actually says Novak here and there's a pro player code on the racket. Before I tried Nikki Runs racket some years back and done a few videos about that. Now I actually own one myself. It's not for sale if you're asking, but I really enjoy playing with it from time to time. Obviously it should be on the wall, but you know, I'm a tennis nerd. I'm going to play with the rackets I own, even if they're quite, quite rare and nice and from a professional player. And I have a few more, uh, Mari, Andre Agassi and uh, Tommy Haas and so on. So if you want videos about those rackets, I will do them in the near future. So this is Novak's frame. It's a 95 square inch, goes by the pro stock code of PT346.1. He used to play with a slightly different racket. Then he tweaked it together with Roman Progs. He made a slightly different string pattern, extended it ever so slightly. It's 27.1 inches, so very close to standard, but a little bit extended for a higher swing weight, despite the slightly lower static weight that he used before. He uses an 1819 string pattern to give him a bit more power and spin potential on his shots. You know, the 1820 is as dense as it gets and as controlled as it gets. So he's not going to get a lot for free with an 1820. But 1819 is a little bit more forgiving. And I do really feel that when I play with this frame, I played with his older racket, I play with this one. I did not have any natural gut. He uses all the power rough at pretty high tensions, like 57 pounds ish, 58, something like that. I had all the power and I had Technifiber X1 biface 130, which is a nice string for a multi-filament, plays gut-like. Nothing plays really like gut, but at least it's pretty close. And the X1 biface is a very nice string to hybrid with. It's a bit expensive, but it's a premium quality string for sure. So I, I, that's what I had, and uh, I've tried his other string setup. You get even less power because he strings it so high, but they are pretty, pretty close in the way they perform. And handed this racket also to my buddy Boss, who I hit with maybe twice a week. Uh, he really liked it. I thought that he would see the power level to be a bit too low, or that he would not find the forgiveness that he finds with Radical Pro, but he was actually very happy playing with this one. The specs, uh, it's strung like this. Uh, is 348 grams because I don't add that extra overgrip that Novak has. He has the head calfskin leather grip, then he does one overlap and one without an overlap. So two overgrips, which obviously changes the balance a bit more towards the handle and gives him a bit more cushioning on the handle. I, I prefer to play with one overgrip. The first times I tried his racket with his setup, I felt like the grip was too thick. So it was difficult to swing. It's still pretty thick. I prefer a two uh, on a head racket, but still I, I'll, I'll deal with that. And the string setup is slightly different, but yeah, the rest is exactly the way he plays it with the lead tape here, quite a decent chunk of lead tape around the three and nine positions. He used to use it a bit lower down, but they, they changed it uh, when they tweaked his frame. It's a demanding frame, definitely more so than what he endorses, which is the Speed Pro. And that's a hundred square inch racket with an 1820 pattern. It's not the same generation of, of design or cosmetic, but you can see that the, the difference is, is quite stark. Like this one is a much bigger head size and more forgiveness, slightly different pattern, thicker beams. Uh, this one being around 20 millimeters, this one is 23. It's not an easy racket to use, but it's definitely more forgiving and more spin friendly and more easier to use than Novak's actual racket. You can't really sell this in the stores. I think the audience for this frame would be very, very small and would not make any commercial sense. Federer's racket is a bit more easy to swing and get power with. I still feel like it's a bit of a double-edged sword because you see a lot of rec players on intermediate, even lower levels that use the RF97 because they love Fed and that's not a great idea because it's a very demanding racket. It doesn't give you much power and can lead to arm issues because it's stiff and heavy and yeah, not the, the best to get any kind of forgiveness with. I think that's one of the reasons they, they don't sell these um, actual pro player rackets to the market. Even Rafa's uh, Pure Arrow, which is the first generation Aero Pro Drive, I've tried swinging that one as well and it's very, very heavy. It adds a lot of weight 
to the 12 o'clock position and it's very difficult to maneuver. And Andy Murray's racket we shouldn't even talk about because his swing weight is so high. I think it's 370. And I can do a separate video about Myers racket if you're interested, if you like this video, because I have it here. I have the PT57A with Andy's name on here. Um, but this one, uh, it's a different string. I had just used all the power for this one. This one is more demanding to swing. The swing weight is even higher. There's more weight in the head than with the Novak's racket. So yeah, I can do a separate video if you're curious. But Novak's racket, great precision, great feel. Bit more power than the PT57A, which Andy uses, I would say. If you would put them in the same swing weight, weight category, I think this one would have a bit more power. Uh, so that's why it's a bit more forgiving. I think it's based loosely on the TI Radical or the Liquid Metal Radical Tour that he used as a junior. So based loosely on this one, a pretty similar mold, but obviously now he's using uh, he's using the 1819 string pattern instead. In the Radical family for sure this racket, so it has a bit more power than the Head Pro Tour 630, uh, if all things would be the same in terms of swing weight weight and balance. But Good racket, very stable, great control on volleys, and not easy to swing with the 360 swing weight. Mine without the extra overgrip and this slight change of string setup spec'd up at 348 grams, which is not crazy, but high. And balance 32.6 centimeter balance. That's around five, four points head light and a swing weight of 363.5. So high swing weight, and you can see his specs also in this video. So yeah, it's a it's a beast of a racket, but manageable. We could play some points, me and Bas, we tried it on both wings. Uh, it's not a racket I can play a match with confidently, to be fair, it's, it's too demanding in the long run. Uh, you don't get a lot of power with this kind of, of racket, and this, the serve was the one I struggled with the most, because the swing weight is very high. So my serve not being the best technically is going to punish me with a racket like this. If I use an extended frame or something more powerful, I get a lot more on serve. So this is probably where I struggle the most at the net and any kind of more controlled shots. I felt super dialed in with this frame and it does that really well. And you can see why Novak likes it because with his immaculate technique, he can hit those sh shots always this close to the line over and over again. But yeah, guys, with these kind of control frames, they want higher swing weights because the swing weight brings power to the frame. So it's dense pattern, small head size, thinner beam, but with that swing weight, they get some power. And the same for Andy with his PT57A. So a great frame, but not really for any commercial use. And the most tennis nerds or recreational players would, would love to hit with it, but it would not be feasible to use it in the long run. I think you should use rackets that give you a bit more help generally and I think the Speed Pro as it is today actually is a very nice frame, gives you control but a bit more power and forgiveness so I can see why they sell that. Hope you like these types of videos as I said I have a few other pro stocks if you want me to go through that and a few other rackets as you might see in the background uh, so we can have a look at that in some other videos. I will get back to coaching content as soon as I'm back in Marbella in September so uh, please be patient. I, I'll do a few more of those videos as well because I know they were well received. If you want to support the work I do and Tennis Nerd, please use any of the links in the description to purchase anything. Sign up for a free trial of some of the services. If you purchase anything, I get a commission at no extra cost to you. For example, buy shoes or tennis strings or whatever at Tennis Warehouse Europe, Tennis Warehouse or Tennis Only. Uh, thanks to Fuzzy Yellow Balls. They have an app called Fuzzy Yellow Balls with a really cool module called Crush It, where you can learn how to maximize your kinetic power in your strokes. The serve module is for free. The other modules uh, you have to pay a subscription for, but there, it's not an expensive app for all the value you get. I've tried it myself. I really think it's, it's worth the money. So yeah, uh, that's great. And uh, you can also use my buddies at Player Court. They have this service to find new hitting partners or a new coach. You get 50% off on a subscription with my link. Uh, so check that out also in the description. That's the best way to support the work I do in the channel and to help me keep going with these types of videos and the written content on tennisnerd.net. That's all for now. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.